that sometimes can get into a team's head, especially when you lose such a long and hard-fought game. We gotta see how Truman State's able to bounce back. Last week, they won two games under 30 minutes, but this time, losing a 51-minute game, it could be a little bit much for their mentality. And right now, doesn't seem like they want to change too much from the pick and ban. Still, Vladimir and Urgot. It almost makes me wonder if Arcadius is going to get back onto his Aurelian soul. The Zaya being locked in, again, the Zaya Recon bot lane is open. But it depends if the teams want to go for it. Whoa. That is a vein, which honestly they can pick early. They know it's against the Zaya, so they might as well. Monkey feels confident. Go for it. I am still muted on stream. I apologize that friends. Oh, no. <laughs> I am back now. <laughs> I didn't oh, no. realize I was still muted, but they could hear you. So that's all that matters. It, it just sounds like I'm talking with myself. It's okay. It makes me look crazy as now Rosen. Not on the cane. The first time we're going to see him changing it up on stream, going for that Warwick. Yeah, Warwick a little bit more tanky. Still has that kind of aggressive style, though, that you can bring out. So we'll see how Brosen does it on, on on this Warwick compared to that cane that he was very adamant about going in on uh, last game. And, oh, please tell me that's a brand support. Oh, man. Now, kind of got high hopes up a little bit as well. But I feel like the Zac is an interesting pick up. The Sejuani as well, pretty much same kind of role, be that tank initiating front line for the team. But, but the Zac Malicious is going to be ha much more into the face of everyone. Arcadius, Mucky, Rosen. So he's got to be a little bit more proactive with how he wants to play around. If you're gone, has to change it up and gets Cassiopeia. Yeah. As I move some stuff around there, Cass is a pretty standard pickup, and it looks like Talia might be the answer, and it is uh, another another first pick phase where we don't see the Rakan to go with the Zaya. They end up going with the Zac and the Cassiopeia instead, so I'm, I'm assuming we'll see a Rakan ban here shortly. But uh, Cass and, Zaya, or, and Talia are two kind of more meta, ban, or meta picks um, than LeBlanc and Malzahar. Malzahar kind of fall off the world, but there's the Rakan ban right away. We'll see how uh, a little bit less aggro, though. Um, so from both what, mid lanes. I wonder what Mikhail's is going to pair up with that. Probably going to see the double support ban as well. Braum comes in for the side of South Florida. Not too surprising. Want to get rid of that so it's a lot easier for this engage coming in from Zaya from Cassiopeia. Yeah, and it's going to be... Both sides didn't pick up a support. So, so far we have three extra support bans with uh, Rakan, Lulu, and Braum. We'll see if they go for another one. They're going to... Both sides oh, are like, Leona. let's let, oh yeah, and Leona, I forgot about the Leona one earlier too, so there's a, there's a lot of support bans with both sides not having one, it's gonna be interesting to see what they end up picking up, as Alistar is the last one banned, so uh, we'll, we're gonna see some, we might see some new supports that we don't see very often. You know, I almost wonder if Highsmith really wants to change it up and go for something similar to like a zillion, try to make it so that when Rosen wants to go in, he can easily speed him up, give him a little bit more, even the Karma to really win this lane for Mucky, but the Scion, I can respect for the Geek King. Yeah, and they are. The Scion's pretty safe pick, so they're going to save their last pick for their support pick, uh, which is exactly what the side of Truman State did last game. Or not Truman State. Uh, Sun Florida did last game. Truman State's doing it this game. Uh, kind of trying to get yourself that preferred bot lane matchup. Not something you see a whole lot, I feel like, at the... I mean, not at the LCS level too much, but uh, it's a good thing to have because if you get picked out by... Uh, if you were to blind pick a support here, uh, you can still get countered and get punished really hard with a vein in your lane, so you kind of have to be safe as we see the Nami, and it looks like it's going to be an Orin for drop shot again. Orin does really well into these tanks, so I can understand why drop shot wants to play, especially when he doesn't have Vladimir or Orgot. Just need something a little bit more safe. Something with a long range engagement. Add that on top of Nami and Zack. That is like a lot of potential for this hard aggression. This full all-in team fight. And even Peel. 
coming in from South Florida. Yeah, they have lots of lots of slows, lots of stuns, knockups, things like that. And it looks like the Janna will be the last pickup. Very safe pickup for Highsmith. Uh, kind of interesting to see how they decide to go in this lane as uh, Nami tends to bully Janna a, li a little bit just because of Nami W, her, her ability to splash onto enemies and do damage as well as heal. Uh, so this, this bot lane might be a little hard for this side of Truman State, I feel like. Uh, everything else seems pretty more standard, a little bit more even based, but I, I, I have a feeling that the side of South Florida wants to try and get ahead in the bot lane again, because if they did, they made a lot of picks on Mucky, but uh, Logan showed that when he was ahead, he was able to do a lot, of, a lot of damage and make some plays happen, so we'll see if they're able to continue that, or if they have something else in mind with this now... Uh, continuously long engage jungler in malicious having zach over the sejuani this time still be able to the gank only, the only thing i like about the janna though is it does offer good peel towards malicious so whenever he jumps in you can easily have the tornado to knock him out of that elastic slingshot make it a lot safer for mucky and arcadius in the back line to feel that they're not going to get jumped on by zach and thrown into the midst of a team fight yeah definitely a janna is the the peel queen as one might uh realize if you've never played jenna that ultimate knockback as well as her howling gale tornadoes to knock people up are really really useful when you can uh, when you have people in trouble so uh we'll see if they're able to keep that zack at bay uh malicious was very adamant about getting a lot of ganks in and using that ultimate from the sidwani obviously his entire body has to go in this time so we'll see how it goes uh if there's going to be a lot of peeling or if there's gonna be a lot of picks again because the, the the picks were the big thing and uh, this time, though, Arcadius has the very mobile mid laner in the Talia. See if he can get, like, the walls in to try and change the fights in either top or bot lane or even in jungle. If you use that ultimate properly, you can do you can do a lot of work with it. So it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, very, It feels like a very different game just because of the drafts from last game because there's feels like less less hard aggression, more kind of standard tanky jungles, tank top laners. Uh I'll say it feels like the same, like a different game with the champions, but the same game with the composition style. Zach wants to go for the early games. He loves to go for this aggression. The last six shot, it's even easier to go for that than a Sejuani. While Rosen on Warwick, he needs to scale up so he gets that infinite duress. The only thing to me that switched is the mid lane. Talia, Arcadius is going to be the one who wants to roam while Dragon wants to win this lane and wants to keep Arcadius pinned down there. Yeah, we'll see how that's going to work out. Your gone was uh, struggled in lane early, obviously in the uh, unfavorable matchup being the little Blanc into the Malzahar. Uh, didn't end up getting kills later on and stuff like that and ended up carrying his own weight later, but he did struggle a little bit in that early game. So we'll see if with him being in maybe the favor or wanting to keep Talia locked down, uh, if he's able to dodge a lot of the Talia spells, he should be able to control this mid lane and do a little bit better to see if he can just catapult himself forward that much quicker. And before we get into game two between Truman State and the University of South Florida, we want to give some quick shout outs to our sponsors, Twitch being the one as always nothing but gratitude towards the largest streaming platform in gaming to support collegiate esports from PAX East and West and many more events this year. Uh, C <laughs> wow, why am I stuttering? CSL wouldn't be what it is today without the help and support from them. Be on the lookout for cool opportunities to be involved with Twitch in the near future and be sure to show them some love on the and support on it, their Twitter, if you want to check them out, it's Twitter at Twitch. Pretty easy to find them. Or you can find them at Facebook. It's going to be Twitch as well. Make sure that you're also keeping up to date with us over on Twitter. You can check us out at Seastar League. Or if you want everything about Collegiate League of Legends, at CSL LOL. So you can always keep up to date with what's going on with the league. Yeah, make sure you check those guys out. They do uh, tremendous things for us. Twitch is awesome. Uh, obviously, we use it all the time. <laughs> but as I we have, yeah i can't say anything else besides i love twitch as well so uh it yeah. looks like we are going to get in the loading screen here momentarily when it loads on my computer but there we go well and this also brings up a good point where you can uh also if you can't check these games out live so if you know anyone who wants to watch these games they could go over to our youtube channel at c star league in order to watch any of the vods that we post up there so you guys can Always make sure to watch your favorite team, see how they won, how they lost, all that good jazz as we get ready for game two between Truman State University and the University of South Florida. Yep, and as I have the same glitch that I had last time where apparently oh, yeah. I can't see anything, that's super it's okay. awesome. I have it, too. It, it takes a bit. But... 
It's it's League Spectator Client. We we have come to know and not necessarily love it, but we deal with it nonetheless. Why is this being so weird? <laughs> okay. I I didn't change any settings and it just like completely so whiffed did, on did me. It go, did it go back to windowed? No, no, it's it, yeah, it, it, no, it's just my my uh, my scaling is off and I don't understand why. I didn't Very touch strange. anything. <laughs> Very strange. Yeah, that, that is, that is weird. I am working on it, guys. Give me a second here. Okay, I'll just talk about some of the items while he's doing that so that he can work on that. You can hear my sultry voice talk about the interesting start coming in from Dikipki going for the corrupting pot on to the scion. Definitely indicating that he wants to go aggressive on to drop shot, even that arcane comet on the scion. Something we do see a lot when he's trying to win lane, shove it out consistently. We turn our attention to mid lane. You're gone having that corrupting pot as well with the phase rush. So he really wants to make sure that he can dodge away from what Articatus is throwing at him. Even if another rock is being thrown his way, it's not going to hurt him too much. Yeah, and I'm having to restart client here, or restart the game oh, no. real quick. So hopefully it lets me reconnect here shortly. But yeah, I don't know why for some reason we were like, it, it had it in the wrong window mode. So we were only going to see the top left hand corner of the screen if we were to watch is it that, from my perspective. So is that not the most important corner of the game? The top left corner? Uh, yes, that's the only corner that matters, obviously. Exactly. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I thought. I'll just, I'll just give very in-depth analysis and commentary of what's going on. I'll make it. I'll paint a story for everyone so they know what's going on. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Loading back in now. Hopefully. All right. There's a little bit of poke coming down in mid and bot. Mucky was trying to see if he can go on to Logan aggressively, but. Not really working out too well. And those press the attack on this Zaya compared to the fleet of footwork coming in for Mucky. Now your gone has a level advantage over Arcadius. So he gets a little bit more poke, especially with the corrupting bot. So he feels invigorated. He feels empowered to go aggressive onto this Talia. All right, we are back in. Sorry about that, guys. Ooh. We have fixed it. Let me get everything up and running. Not crazy like. Really interesting as bot lane has been won by Logan and Mikhail going very aggressive on to Heisman. A lot of damage forcing both him and Mucky under this tower. And that's the problem that you mentioned before. This Janna in the Nami lane. Pretty much you can mean that the Janna's consistently poked out over and over again. Especially Mucky. He's got the low range, so he's gotta be so careful into the Zaya. Yeah, it, it's a really brutal lane that they picked for themselves, the side of uh, Truman State. I, I love Janna. Janna is my main by far. I play a lot of Janna games. Uh, I, I know this I know this matchup very, very well, so I know how abusive it is as we have uh, Brosen up top. They missed the Q from the Scion, but it doesn't look like he's going to get killed. Got the fear on to drop shot. A lot of damage as well, but Brosen's got to be careful. He's taking pretty low. Now you're gone, fighting with Arcadius in mid. Pots helping him to get a lot of extra damage onto the Tilia, forcing him under the tower. No mana for the Tilia as well. Be very hard and very difficult for her to actually go aggressive into Cassiopeia. Yeah, these winning lanes they picked for mid and bot lane for the side of Ooh, South Florida. Ooh, coming in onto Smith. Wow, that forced the flash and the heal out of this Truman State bot lane. That's got to be devastating for this Vayne who needs to just stay consistent into Zaya. Yeah, they, they needs that farm to not fall behind, and it's going to be really hard to deal with now as uh, the Tr Truman State blowing two summoners there, while as the side of South Florida still has both of theirs. So they're very, very, very comfortable right now uh, in what they want to do. Uh, I feel like the Vayne Janna matchup is kind of a mismatch of what you want to do with supports. I mean, you can keep the Vayne safe, but obviously it's a lot harder to do when they have a poke hero. I feel like they could have had something like a Caitlyn or something like that, played a little bit more back uh, to utilize this Janna more. But uh, unfortunately, they're just going to have to deal with the fact that they're going to get pushed in for a while here. I completely agree with you on that. It just feels like there's a lot more options for the side of Truman State, but they wanted to go for this comfort, this low range and scaling they feel like this game might go and drag on to the 50 minutes mark again and if it does sure the vein will become useful then but when she falls behind in lane already down 10 cs to logan not looking so good okay and then the other story you mentioned you're gone on this better mid lane matchup able to kind of bully out uh arcadius this time and he is doing just that 
uh, pushing him out of lane constantly. In fact, Talia already has uh, or gone back to buy. Uh, it looks like this it might have been the second recall for her because she got bullied out so hard. She's actually down 10 CS already, just like the Vayne is. So winning lane so far for the side of South Florida. And Ornin, uh, Ornin and Sion are basically trading. Uh, a little bit of a gank gave him the Sion a little bit of a CS lead. But here comes the gank and bottom. Frozen, though. He's going for that move and speed. Got the bubble on to the Janna and finishing him off so quickly. The fear wasn't helping too much as Flavius has to flash over. Here comes the teleport in. They want to see if they can get on to Rosen. Dodges away with the Q, but Malicious about to find Arcadius getting a little bit of damage onto him. Gets hit up by that seismic shove into the pebbles, so gotta be a little bit careful, but does have the blood blitz and with Yurgon in the area, pretty safe. Still, the massive win has to be that kill onto Highsmith in the bot lane. Yeah, first blood over to your ADC. Logan getting that one. Beautiful bubble landed by Mikhail's. Even with the Warwick uh, coming in, they were able to just turn and kill the Janna almost, almost in like instantaneously. They were just like, oh, I hit the bubble, let's go. Zaya gets the kill, and then they start their way out. Uh, they still have, uh, Nami had to use her summoners, but Zaya, Logan, still has both the heal and the flash up. So sitting pretty on the Zaya right now uh, in, in this matchup bottom. And that, that you, can't, you can't complain too much about that if you're, if you're an ADC. Being a head, a head to CS and getting first blood. Uh, you, you got to be pretty ecstatic about that. Especially if you're the jungler. Malicious hasn't really had to worry too much about his jungle. Sure, he's fallen a little bit behind Rose and hasn't really gotten any successful games just yet. But he's not falling quite as behind as he did in game one. Even showing himself bot lane to just soak up some of the experience. Yeah, it looks like he was trying to hold the wave there so it would just sit at the tower is what it looks like that happened so that uh, Logan can get there and get that CS and keep his lead. That's exactly what they're doing. But again, like you mentioned, Brosen being the farm maniac that he is, is quite a bit ahead in the jungle and then is also going to take this dragon it looks like. But here he comes in. Oh, the steal. The steal. Oh, it's stolen away by Malicious. Brosen's got to run away. The hell not helping out. The flash coming in for Logan. Not Blade Caller, but that's a lot of damage flash for Malicious to finish off a second kill on the high smith. I, I thought they were going to be able to uh, secure that one because it looked like they were in a decent spot. They hadn't been seen yet, but there was a ward there. So the rotation in for Melissus and Logan after having that lane dominance already going, able to push up into the jungle and get another kill. Or not into the jungle, into the river and get up another kill onto Highsmith. Uh, uh, not that kill for him. At least it goes over Malicious this time. But again, sitting pretty, doing exactly what they want to do, getting objectives and uh, getting kills on the people they need them the most on. And that's an inferno drink too yeah normally i wouldn't even talk about gold discrepancy this early on to the game but that's an 800 lead for logan over mucky sitting at eight minutes into the game this is a zaya into a vein matchup well sure the vein she does really well into the late game she gets some items she scales up but so does the zaya so this is gonna make it that much easier for logan to be able to beat out mucky yeah, and Logan did that last game too, where he was just all over the place uh, getting the damage in in the mid to late game for the side of South Florida. So they should be in a good spot here uh, going forward. Like 800 gold at seven minutes. That's like, I, that's almost, I think you want to say it's half of their lead is on just the Zaya over the vein. Exactly. That's what it is. And that's going to be so strong. Sure, it only amounts to the boots of speed at the moment. Once the game keeps going, he's going to be able to keep shoving into Mucky, force him to farm under this power. And if Rosen's never able to get a successful gank off, just going to keep benefiting the side of South Florida. Yeah, and then that, that mid lane still going in the favor of your god, but here comes Rosen. And oh. Possibility. Great flash in as they have Malicious showing up, trying to go for the howl, the seismic jump, and it only do a little bit. Malicious so healthy, he doesn't even care. They finish off your god even after he had a flash away, and Arcadius had to throw pebble after pebble just to discourage your god from going for more. Tidal Wave was using the bot lane only to get the flash out of Highsmith. Doesn't matter because that's a massive win in mid with double buffs onto Cassiopeia. Yeah, double buff cast now is going to be a nightmare to deal with. Blue buff Cassiopeia by itself is almost almost too much to deal with, without, especially without one of your own. Talia is going to have a rough time here. Not a whole lot of damage yet on her yet either, but Cassiopeia with that poison and they've been able to twin fang spam like that. Tons of damage went out on Nebrosa and was able to kill him. Uh, a good turnaround though. He knew that Malicious was there. Uh, they didn't even actually have to use the last bounce from Zack, so oh Landing man. Landing on a high smith, forcing out that monsoon. Logan's gotta be careful though, he's getting hit by the silver bolt, but look who's behind. You're gone, going for the wrapper on this tower. So low, Mucky, trying to see if he can fight with the Cassiopeia, even gets the teleport. 
out of the Keep King, but was cancelled. So, doesn't end up finishing that, doesn't end up helping out his bot lane, but the tower will survive for the moment being. Yeah, just for now, it looks like he's going to survive, but here comes another dive. There comes the nod, and oh, Man, the flash. not much Monkey can do. He gets the heal. Let's bounce to get himself out of dodge as Roshan shows up. The Howl only onto the minion, so it doesn't really scare anybody. Yeah, Mucky living there with no health. Uh, a very, very scary situation for him. The Zack ult finally used, less bounce, does not hit because of the flash and the heal. But uh, good, good pressure coming down bottom again. South Florida looking to really knock down this uh, tower quickly and then keep snowballing that lead that they've kind of gathered all throughout the map so far. First, uh, first turret goes down. Infant arrest. Insurance coming in, but Rosen doesn't have the damage necessary just yet. He goes down. Weaver's Wall, a little bit too late from Arcadius. So not only do they get the tower, but they get a second kill onto Logan. Yeah, the, another good bubble from Ma M Mikhail's here, landing that on the infinite dressing uh, Warwick and be able to stop the damage, which he doesn't really have a whole lot of, like you mentioned. Uh, but uh, just enough to kill him out, and uh, Zaya goes home with another kill and now has an Essence Reaver over this. Uh, just the BF sword and some components, not even boots yet for the side of Mucky. Getting up to a 1,400 gold lead for Logan as well. It's only been a couple minutes, so I feel like we just got to keep checking in on Logan, see how much further he gets ahead, especially after he gets towers, he's gifted kills. It just seems like Logan is going to be the one we have to keep our eyes on for the rest of this match. Yeah, Logan looks like he's ready to pop off at any point in time. Right now, it just seems like everyone's going for their backs, not going to get too much more, trying to shove out these waves. Cadius has a good chunk of gold at about 700, so he might be able to finish off a little bit, but... So far behind, the Rod of Ages has already been completed for your gone. Yeah, that's not uh, a very interesting choice. I don't think I feel like we see that too much on a Cassiopeia, but going for that extra mana stack is never really a bad thing, honestly. And you need that mana to spam those abilities. So uh, kind of an interesting choice, but he's so far ahead at this point. His teammates are doing fine. He's having no problems in lane. Why not? Game going aggressive onto Logan. Great dodge coming in from the Zaya and even from the Nami. Bubble landing onto Rosen. Gotta be careful. Oh. You're a little far out, but that damage is huge. Then you got the killing spree as well. Drop shot shows up somehow into the fight. Getting the flash, but not getting the knockup just yet onto Dakeem King. Not until Militia shows up, but he gets howled away. Flash for flash. Rampage for Logan. And now you're gone here. They want to go tower dive onto Mucky. Look at that damage from your gone. Rosen healing up a little bit from the infinite uh, dress. Arcadius. Arcadius, he sees low health bars. He has blood in his eyes and he, he wants, wants to get, to get the ace. He can't get it just yet. The heal was not enough and the killing spree is gifted to your god. Yeah, I was about to say that. That seemed like a little bit of a uh, odd decision from Arcadius there to go in at the last second when all his teammates are already dead. I mean, there were low health bars, but I don't think there was any way he was going to get out of that one. So uh, uh, pretty much an ace and an extra turret goes through for the side of Southern Florida. And they're just going to cruise. This is 13 minutes in, 9-0, to zero, and they're up almost 7K. Yeah, but they have a lot of gold in their pockets, so they got to be careful. Don't go too greedy. You don't want to give this over. You don't want to have a game one happen here, especially with this kind of lead. You don't want to have it going back and forth, back and forth. You find yourself up 7,000 gold at just 13 minutes into the game. Yeah, exactly. Don't want to throw, which is something that I feel like we had a little bit of uh, not throwing, just misplacement from people. Uh, don't don't want to get nice picked off. <laughs> yeah. Nice wording from it. You're being very nice, Stefan. I, I'm not so nice. So it was much throwing, many wows in game one. Yeah, so let's see if Southern Florida can buckle down here. They did it last game. They were able to kind of fight as a team and get the picks they needed to win the game. Let's see if they're able to just, well, they have a lead, if they can use this lead to just clean Snowball out the rest of the game, or if they're going to struggle and uh, get picked off again where they're going to put themselves in a position where they're not in a huge dominating lead like they currently are. It's possible. Yeah. We'll see what they decide to do, though. Uh, here, news from our helicopter cams talking about the lead that Logan's gotten again over Mucky. Just a couple more minutes have passed, I think three more minutes, and he's jumped that over from, I think it was 1,400 to now 2,400 over Mucky. Oh, wow, that's a lot of gold to go over his way, and it, this is a best of three. I saw a couple people talking about it in chat. As the less bounce comes out from Malicious, pulls back Brosin, but no one else there to follow it up quite yet. Behind. It's going for the title wave from Mikhail's, but he's got to be careful. He's away from it. 
A lot of damage. Exhaust coming in, but they cut off Frozen. That's the Feather Storm. Are they going to go for the Blade Caller? Flash coming in. The heal. Keep him alive for now. And Mikhail finally falls down. The ending that perfect game. But finally, Logan was able to finish off Frozen. You get the Flash from High Smith. Great use of the Monsoon to keep himself alive. Now Malicious is caught in the pit. And here comes Drop Shot. Trying uh -oh. to look for the knockup onto one member. It's a no mana Talia. No knockup just yet, but slowing him down slowly but surely for Yorkon to get the Rampage. Yeah, another kill happening there. And then we saw a little bit of what was the gold lead on Logan there, probably keeping him alive, but he might actually get caught out. He is going to get caught oh, out. Oh, yeah, he's going to get caught out. This is going to be the triple bolts coming in. Doesn't even have enough for the roots and gives shutdown and double buff to Mucky. So, unfortunately for him, he's going to give a good chunk of gold to this Vayne. Yeah, and Vayne desperately needs that gold, though. They've been behind most of this game. Uh, they did get the kill onto the Nami and then the Zaya, as, as we saw there, which is really good. So it gives them a little bit more gold. But you know, they really need to kind of odd place for the t uh, the Zaya to be after barely winning the fight versus Brosen chasing him down when he's so far ahead on gold. Uh, he just needs to be a little bit more careful, I feel like. They, like we mentioned, they need to not throw, essentially, and not get caught out. But here comes uh, You're Gone, who has we, it kind of been a dark horse for a while there. 4-0-1, though with stacking items, doesn't really have a real damage item completed besides that Rod of Ages. Uh, that, uh, Yurgon's going to be a really, really scary force to be reckoned with here soon once he completes a big damage item. Flavius is dueling a little bit with Mikhail's and Drop Shot, trying to see who can get control of the side waves. Looks like Truman State have a good push coming in the top side until Logan shows up. But with Logan, the AD carry by himself on the top side of the map, I wonder if Truman State are going to try to make a call for something. Maybe yeah. they want to go for a collapse into this mid, try to pick off your gone. Yeah. Brosen was already looking to go towards the Zaya, but now he's going to go towards the bottom. Uh, obviously, Zaya having to play quite a bit of defensively there, though, knocking your gone back instead of forward. If he would have knocked him towards him, it might have been an uh, opening there for Brosen to come in and get the infinite dress off and maybe get a kill on your gone. But unfortunately, it doesn't happen, and they're just playing very defensive on the side of Truman State. Can't say that you blame them. When you're this far down in gold this early into the game, you have to play defensively. You don't want to give over even more leads to South Florida. You already know that these squads, they can make mistakes. They're, they're fallible, where they go a little bit too aggressive. They get a little too greedy. We just saw that from Logan and Mikhail's. Mikhail's getting a little bit with the top side, looking to see if he can help out Malicious get control of the base. Yeah, they're clearing out vision. It looks like they go are going to go for that... Uh... For Shelly here and claim that Rift Herald to get their push on in middle lane as best as they can. Uh, Truman State, like you said, they are they're, they're just stopping the bleeding by playing defensive. They need to try and stabilize as uh, fights kind of break out. A little bit of trades happen in both places. Mucky though, uh, trading with drop shot could be an interesting matchup there as there's a, uh, a level advantage obviously for the top laner, but I don't think he's going to be able to do the damage to take out this vein without some help. Yeah, especially because it is a vein into an orange, so he, true damage coming in to be able to do a lot to drop shot. Yep, uh oh. In the area as well. Gonna go for the infinite duress, but you're taking some tower shots. Doesn't matter because you already got the killing spree for Mucky. Uh, Shelly makes her appearance in mid. Knocked back by Highsmith. Pretty nice on that. Trying to see if they can keep this alive, but here comes the aggression from Malicious with the tidal wave. The damage to finish off Highsmith and get Keith King getting the heal from Flavius, who's taking a lot of poke from your gone in this mid lane. Running away, but these are the twin things sneaking in to Arcadius. They finally finish it off. They look to get these towers, even though they lost the one in bot lane. Gonna open up mid. Yeah, exactly. They make the play across map as they see that they try to make the play on drop shot. They do end up getting the kill. Unlucky for him, he headbutted into the wall and was able to get infant duress stunned out there. But uh, his team is going to end up getting two turrets, it looks like, uh, with the help of the Rift Herald. Yeah, not much that Rosen can do. He got knocked up as well by drop shot. Here comes to Keith King. Trying to see if he can go, but he got rooted by the blade caller. Taking so much damage, and drop shot finally finishes him off with the fellow from beneath. You're gone. He even gets a little bit of a help when he finishes off Highsmith in the back line. Look at that. That's a huge gold lead already coming back over for the side of South Florida as they look to hammer away at these inhibitor towers. Yeah, they, they had a little bit of a rough time there where they looked like they were going to be in trouble, but they do take a ball, whole bunch of objectives. The good Zaya ultimate to dodge the Scion coming in, really well done. Ended up rooting him out and taking half his health away with that as well. It just shows how powerful Logan is on this Zaya and how he's using that to help his team out. As He's the main target, he keeps himself alive, and then Yurgon just helps him clean house with those Twin Fang spam. 
And that's what I was just gonna ask. Who do you focus? Do you focus, Logan, or do you focus your gone? Both of them got six kills under their belt. Lots of gold and a lot of damage that they can spit out consistently over the fight. Here comes a fight engagement. Good ulti there from the Orn. Double knockout. Like a lot of damage at the flash in from Logan. So greedy. An infinite duress, but it's canceled by the knockup coming in from Orn as they pick up three kills almost instantaneously for the side of South Florida. Running for the hills. High Smith and Dakeep King. They cannot fight anymore. Malicious does not care. He's pretty danky. He might look to see if he could go for the dive, but instead he waits for the team and waits for the minions. Yeah, they're going to go try and push this tier 3 turret here at 20 minutes. Pretty good idea to try and push it. Maybe a little bit too aggro there as Dropshot took a whole bunch of damage from it. And now they, they should be able to get it, though. It shouldn't be too hard. You're gone thinking it, though. So he took a little bit of poke and got to keep in mind these are very low death timers still. We're only 20 minutes into the game, so Rose and Arcadius and Monkey, they're all back up. And there comes the Scion Ultimate again. That's not happening. Look at Logan. He's got to be careful. He flashed away. The left bounce going to pull back Rosen right over to Logan. A lot of damage comes in from one auto attack from Logan. But the shove back from the size of Chubb pops the Paul Blitz of Malicious. They're going to sacrifice their Zack. They realize that they cannot keep him alive. But they're happy with what they got. They got themselves an inhibitor tower and an inhibitor from that fight. Yeah, but they did lose their jungler, so it looks like the side of Truman State is going to try and push the issue at this dragon, but uh oh. And they fight. Look at that damage coming in from Tidal wave. From drop shot as well. He goes right into the back line onto Rose, and he's not afraid of anybody. Nobody's died just yet. Even though Dropshot has gotten a good zone potential, they weren't able to finish off anybody, and Mikhail's a chunk out. Mucky trying to see if he can duel with the drop shot but a lot of damage comes in from the bellows from beneath even smith takes a lot of damage but you're gone slap the round and the shutdown is picked up by arcadius maybe going for a little bit more as mucky's able to get those triple bolts getting a little bit more poke on a drop shot oh a little bit too greedy as logan finally turns it around these fights so messy from both squads yeah just tons of damage being traded back and forth uh, it looked like they wanted to go in and try and finish off some of the low health members of truman state but uh, your god was able to got knocked up there instead by Arcadius, knocked back into the enemy team, and so he got blown up pretty quickly there. Kind of just uh, over aggression, I feel like, from the side of, of South Florida. Maybe again, calm it down a little bit, uh, stay together, get what you need, and maybe in that mid turn after you get the inhibitor, just kind of fall back out. Try not to give too many things over. Uh, they're so far ahead still. All they really have to do is play together, and they should be able to win this game. Especially with the fact that they already got the inhibitor in mid, so it's going to force the side of Truman State to keep someone there to deal with these super minions. They cannot let them barrel into their base and get a lot of damage onto these Nexus Towers. But still, Rosen wants to make sure that this Baron does not go down without a fight. And there is a dragon up on the map as well, respawn, but the, the vision is getting cleared out in the Baron pit. Obviously, uh, the team of Southern Florida has the advantage, so they're going to try and clear out that vision and then go for some kills but logan get caught out a little bit there taking quite a bit of damage though finally this talia oh, showing no. some power it's a little bit too far out good tornado so he's able to disengage from your gun but that was one twin fangs into the noxious blast yeah that did a lot of damage to high Smith. yeah this is this is a level nine Janna, and there's a level 11 Nami, so uh-oh. Got going very aggressive, and they instantaneously get Arcadius Mucky running for the hills, but he got the stretching strikes onto him. Malicious is easily able to take a great blade caller as well as a let's bounce in with that to finish off so many of these members. Heisman is forced to flash away. He's going to be the only survivor for Truman State after a great engage came in from South Florida. Yeah, drop shot started it off with the Ornaunty knocking everyone up. And then there was a ton of CC that just landed in the back and in behind it as Malicious came in able to knock up two with the less bounce after killing a couple off already it looked like the less bounce might have almost got interrupted though as the janna land the howling gale but it wasn't enough as they were already all so low and four members for the side of truman state go down baron goes over to the side of south florida and now they're going to look for more as they have four people pushing top as it looks like you're gone is going to go solo the dragon can you easily do that now he's cassiopeia sitting on two and a half items so oh, almost three items he's got that the makings of the land you probably can go back and take that unless Arcadius wants to interrupt this dragon. You're gone. He's happy. He's gotten the Talia here, and his team is getting themselves the towers. He's going for the chase onto Arcadius. And he almost has it. Away. The poison's ticking away. One more, and there it goes. You're gone. Finishes him. Yeah, that last blast landed in the dune enough there. As uh oh, Janna in trouble. Barely getting out of that one, dodging the 
the tidal ulti, wave. the tidal wave. Yes, sorry. No, it's okay. It's uh. I was about very, to call. I was about to call it a riptide, and I was like, that's not what I was thinking of. Okay, but look at how much damage comes in. Calls the Lord God. Almost was able to pick up a kill onto Highsmith. He's able to get back to his fountain just in time. That's gonna be the Infinity Rush onto Logan. Trying to see if he can get onto Mucky with Big Collie to finish him off, but onto Mikhail's. Doesn't matter because they turn around, get two kills for the mere support. Gotta be happy if you're South Florida with the minions coming in, all of them barren buff. They can easily end this game at half the time of the last one. We're only 25 minutes into the game. Flavius just came back up to use the Weaver's Wall to cut off. That does not even land the Ooh, what a knockback. Knock back, drop shot. They lose to Keep King in the meanwhile, even the support going down. Now it's only Arcadius and the ghost of the Keep King left to try to defend this Nexus, but it will fall. 2-0 going over to the University of South Florida. Yeah, and, and after a back and forth game one that went 50 minutes, we have South Florida come out with winning lane matchups in draft, and that's exactly what they did. One lane, one game. As they won all those lanes, pushed the pressure around the map, took all the objectives they could. They gave up one tower that entire game, just bottom and uh, only seven kills total. Uh, probably a couple on a little bit of overzealous plays, but some much cleaner play, I would say, compared to game one for the University of South Florida. Yeah, much cleaner. Sure, there were those hiccups. We can mention that there was a couple where, uh, for whatever reason, Mikhail's was the one going for a flank as the support, and then Logan being a little bit too greedy, thinking that he could stay around with 25% health into a lane that he knew Mucky was nearby. But still, doesn't matter because they got the W at half the time of the, the previous game. Yeah, and that's all you really need to do, uh, especially for, I would say, for Team O Cup teams as well. Teams that not aren't still in the playoffs and stuff like that for the, the, the regions and things like that. Improving every game is something that lots of people overlook, but I feel like it's very, very important to make even slight changes every game to improve every game, and that's, that's just how you improve as a team, is is doing stuff like that. Going from a game where you play kind of back and forth and all over the place to kind of button it down and going in and just cleaning house to a team that you were barely, barely able to beat in the first game. That's also a little bit talking with Truman State where that's that mentality after a well-fought game one where it goes 51 minutes but you don't manage to win that really does tend to hurt the morale of players where they put their heart into it they put their soul on the line to try to see if they get the W but it was all for naught and then usually you, you come to that game too and it's already in their head though like, we lost that game how did we lose that game can we even win game two yeah, definitely. Uh, a, a, a mental state is something that you need to keep it in. And, like, you know, uh, losing a close match like that can be devastating to any team in any game. It's just you, your mindset just goes out the window sometimes. And uh, that might have been the case here for Truman State. But when it comes down to it, we have South Florida taking it home of the 2 0 victory and moving on in the Team O Cup. Uh, they will be in the round of eight of that first bracket. But, guys, as we have, we are before we close out here, we are going to tell you guys to come back tomorrow. We are looking at Toronto versus New York is what we have in the lineup for noon tomorrow. That will be a C-Law playoff match, and hopefully we'll have something at the 4 o'clock hour. We don't have anything confirmed yet, but we will keep you guys in the loop for that. Uh, before we go, anything else you want to say, Mad Magical? Honestly, I just want to say those were some exciting games, and I cannot look forward more till tomorrow, especially with Toronto and New York being what's on the line. Where are we going to see who's going to be able to take it for that Eastern region? So make sure to come back in for that. Yeah, and as, as we said, guys, we'll see you guys. So you won't, probably won't see us. You'll see some of our coworkers tomorrow. But I am Stefan the S Ruff, roughly, and with me is Mad Magical. I didn't get your I didn't get your full name before <laughs> I did this, so I can't even do it right. But Mad Magical, who is... <laughs> Alex, Alex, Mad Magical Wielden. It's okay. Most people can't pronounce my last name right. Anyways, I get Weldon. I'm a no. I'm not related. <laughs> uh, it happens. So, but we will see you guys next time. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you tomorrow for more Collegiate League of Legends.